from the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi out there, this is Ropecast, and I'm Peter Tischer. And I'm Roger Charlton. Good morning, Roger. Hello. I've got a topic today that we can really sink our teeth into. Really? Yeah, pun intended here. <laughs> I wanted to talk about the different words that the English have for the different kinds of meat. Yeah. One interesting thing about this is that when you deal with the meat itself, all the words seem to come from French. Yes. Because uh, veal, that comes from veau. Yeah. Beef. And beef, boeuf. Yeah. So, and pork is actually almost spelled the same way, but pronounced without the K in French. Yeah. Pork, pork. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so, those are all French. But as soon as you come to the animals where the meat comes from, it all sounds German. So, you have swine, schwein, and cow, sounds like German Koo, yeah, and calf or calf, whichever way you want to pronounce it, kalp. So yeah. that's a kind of odd, isn't it? It is. It's it's much commented on, and people pretty well agree this goes back to the period of history after the Normans conquered England. Mm -hmm. You know, 1066 and all that. Yeah, yeah. And for quite a long period after that, French was the language in England, or a form of French. Yeah. That is, well, French um, had a big influence all over Europe yeah. for a while. Mm -hmm. But there, over in uh, England, it was the, the language of the court, it was the language of administration, mm -hmm. the language of educated people, unless they use Latin. Mm -hmm. But what does this have to do with meat? Yeah, well, if you think about it, back in those days, ordinary people didn't get to eat very much meat. Yeah. They might be looking after the animals, mm -hmm. but they would, some of them would serve table for the wealthy, for the aristocrats. Mm-hmm. And at table, they would hear these French words, like boeuf. Ah, okay. Uh, so, so the aristocrats would just say, uh, serve me some boeuf. Yes. Uh, ah, okay. And they just took well, that up. Whereas out in the fields, they'd be looking after their kind, their cure, uh -huh. you know, the word that is given as cow in, right. in modern English. Ah, okay. Okay, makes sense. Is there any proof of that? Well, there's, um, there's a certain amount of evidence, but whether you can call it proof, I think that's perhaps exaggerating slightly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. There's plenty of evidence. <laughs> Food's interesting anyway, as far as words go, I think. Well, yes. Do you know that you can actually trace aspects of culture through looking when words came into the language? Uh, I guess that would be the words come into a language when you first start eating stuff. Or, or drinking. Or drinking, Let's yeah. Look at food and drink. Uh huh. So some of the oldest words in what we now call English are the words that are now bread, butter, fish. Because everybody's always eaten that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And water, of course, mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. wine and beer. I mean, wine comes from Latin anyway, mm -hmm. and beer. All right. And then a little later, this period we've just been talking about, we get beef, mutton. Mm hmm. That was another one. Mutton All right. And mutton. Lamb. Mm -hmm. yeah. Veal. Mouton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oysters. Oysters. Some kinds of seafood. Oh, that's kind of classy. And those who could afford it were drinking various kinds of wine, like claret for a red wine. Uh huh. Or Rhenish wine, wine from the Rhine. Ah, Rhenish, Rhenish. Yeah. Oh, okay. And even Muscatel. Uh -huh. So all of these words go right the way back to Middle English. Uh huh. That period in the Middle Ages. But there's new stuff as well in oh, the English yes. language, right? A bit later, we get potatoes mm -hmm. and turkey. Mm -hmm. Bananas, and which coffee. were imported, coffee yeah. as well, right? So that comes in later. What what time is that? Well, this is fifteen hundred, sixteen hundred. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. When we, when we get to the eighteenth century, we get a little more sophisticated. We get avocados, mm. and pate, right? And pasta, uh -huh. and uh, tea comes along, as well as sherry and brandy and champagne, all kinds of alcoholic drinks. Uh huh. Uh huh. And then by the 19th century, you get into things like hors d'oeuvre, uh -huh. clearly French. Right. Sandwich. Wait, the sandwich, I think, does not come from another country. That's no. the Earl of Sandwich who that's invented right. it, right? That's, that's what they say, yes. Uh-huh. Uh, well, sounds convincing. <laughs> then we get spaghetti. Mm-hmm. Which is definitely Italian. And right? my, what might interest Germans is we also get seltzer for fizzy water. Ah, 
Okay, from the original source. Yes, that's right. Oh, wow, wow. And what would be real new terms then? Well, into the 20th century, we get things like mayonnaise mm -hmm. to put on our chips. Now it's mm -hmm. chips with everything. Right, Britain. right. You well, don't say French fries. Not in Britain. Not in Britain. No. Americans say it. On the subject of the USA, that gives us soda water and, of course, Coca-Cola. Right, right. And a cola is a kind of drink that was only invented at the turn of the 19th century, uh, to the 20th century. That's right, yes. Right, right. And of course, it's an ongoing process. We're still finding new words for food and drink. Uh-huh. So you have more of those? Not for today. Okay. But let's just put a few of those maybe on our website. Oh, so let's do that. Yeah. yeah, okay. And say goodbye. Bye. Bye, dear listeners. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.